We begin though with the latest twist on the AstraZeneca roller coaster. For a fourth time now, Canada is changing its guidance on who should get it. Adults over the age of 30 should be eligible for AstraZeneca according to the Federal Vaccine Advisory Committee. Previously, it recommended those age 55 and up. So far, there have been four cases of rare blood clotting incidents in Canada after someone received an AstraZeneca shot, but officials say the benefits still far outweigh those small risks. Now that more people could be eligible to get AstraZeneca, is there enough supply to make a difference? Anita Anand is the Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Minister Anand, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. I'd like to start with this latest news on AstraZeneca from the Advisory Committee on Immunization, which says anyone 30 plus can use it. So that opens it up for a lot more people, but the supply in the country right now is still kind of low. Uh, when will you have a clearer sense on when Canada can expect more AstraZeneca? Well, let me just uh, begin by saying that we take AstraZeneca doses uh, from multiple sources. Of course, our APA for 20 million doses. Uh, we have also uh, COVAX doses have already been delivered as well as serum doses. Uh, so in terms of future supply, we will see about 4 million doses of AstraZeneca coming into the country by the end of June, including 1 million AstraZeneca AstraZeneca doses in the month of June. Uh, we are continuously pressing the supplier for additional doses earlier. We are also negotiating with the United States uh, potentially for some AstraZeneca doses. So those are areas that we are continually to press. And of course, accelerating doses is uh, the work of our department every single day. So 4 million by the end of June, but a million and a half of that is from the Serum Institute in, in India. And you know, when you look at the situation in India, they're not exporting vaccines. And I think we can all understand why. Uh, so, so how confident are you that those will arrive before the end of June, just given the circumstances in that country right now? Well, let me answer the question as directly as I can. Those doses are more than likely to arrive before the end of June. I was on the phone with our High Commissioner this morning. The Serum Institute has told us that they are committed to delivering to Canada once India uh, surpasses the current very difficult situation that the country is in at the current time. So what about the question for, of second doses? A lot of Canadians have gotten their first dose uh, of AstraZeneca, but with the sort of, there's no clear line of sight, I guess, for a lot of them on when the next supplies will be. So how confident are you that we'll get a good solid re-up of AstraZeneca in time to give that second dose for people in that 12 to 14 week interval? Well, again, uh, my role as procurement minister is to bring in doses to Canada as soon as possible. And the bulk of our doses under our APA will be in June and over the summer months. So I am confident that we will have the supply on hand to provide the second doses. But I want to go back to our overall numbers. Uh, the risk of focusing on AstraZeneca alone uh, is that you're not actually taking into account the entire portfolio of vaccines that we have on the table. 60% of our deliveries right now are from Pfizer. We are going to see 2 million doses of Pfizer being delivered each week in the month of May and 2.5 million doses of Pfizer over five weeks in the month of June. That will be the bulk of our deliveries uh, prior to the end of June, which will be between 48 and 50 million doses. So what I think would be prudent is for us to be thinking about additional areas in which Pfizer could be delivered um, to the Canadian public so as to expand the number of Canadians receiving doses overall. Do you mean start diverting some of that Pfizer to younger age groups uh, more quickly? Are you, are you talking about that sort of a thing? Because AstraZeneca, which is kind of roller coastered around, it was, you know, it's mostly for older people. Um, is that what you're suggesting that the country starts to do with Pfizer? Because it is going to ramp up really big starting the first week of May. Well, David, I've been saying this for months, that putting the numbers on the table, Pfizer is the workhorse in our portfolio, and we really do need to think about ways in which other sectors of our population can access it. Uh, as I said, the doses coming into the country from Pfizer are going to continue to increase at very high levels. And uh, prior to the end of the quarter, we are going to receive uh, 24.2 million doses of Pfizer cumulative. 
So let us remember that, uh, yes, we have a diversified portfolio, but Pfizer is the workhorse in the portfolio and the deliveries from Pfizer have been incredibly stable. Yeah, no, the, you do the math and Pfizer, which has been delivering like clockwork since the interruption earlier in the year, there's enough Pfizer to give every remaining eligible Canadian who wants their first dose to have one by Canada Day, essentially. So when, when you're talking about the vaccination efforts and we saw the modeling today, if we get the 75% first dose and 20% second dose, maybe we can start lifting some restrictions. So when you think of that 75% target, that first dose target that Pfizer can do on its own, is that what you're targeting right now? You're looking at Canada Day, end of June, that, that's, that's the federal government's target on that point? Well, my target at a personal level is to continue to bring in vaccines to the country by the millions. And that's exactly what that 48 to 50 million number is aiming to do prior to the end of June in terms of doses received. But if you want to take a step back and talk about herd immunity, David, I think you can't just be looking at vaccines. We are in an era where variants are increasing in number. We have high case counts. We have uh, stressing the importance of public health measures. And so I think from a public safety standpoint, as Minister Blair said this morning, we really need to take a uh, cross the board look at how to reach uh, herd immunity and vaccines won't be the only answer there. But for my part, I'll continue bringing in millions and millions of doses, two million doses or so next week. And then for every week thereafter, at least two Two million doses. In that 48 to 50 million, you say, by the end of this quarter, there, there is still a bit of uncertainty with some of them. Like, we anticipate they'll deliver, we just kind of don't know when. And Moderna is an example of that, right? Next week's shipment is cut from 1.2 down to 650,000, uh, a reduction of 550,000. And, and they also said, look, maybe one or two million doses we're counting on in this quarter could be slid into the next quarter. There was an anticipation of 3 million Moderna doses in May. Mm -hmm. I, I took the Moderna announcement to sort of put that in, in a bit of doubt, but Major General Fortan said yesterday that he was anticipating good news from Moderna in short order. Mm -hmm. Are you optimistic mm -hmm. we're going to get those three million doses as a country next month? I spoke with Moderna yesterday, and uh, I am optimistic as well. Uh, they are taking a moment to ensure that the numbers that they provide to Canada and other countries are stable, and we appreciate that. And they will be back, I am sure, with additional deliveries in high numbers. We have to remember that Moderna is going to provide between 10.3 and 12.3 million doses prior to the end of the quarter. They are working very hard to address the labor issues at their uh, plant in Lanza, and I am very hopeful that we will continue to receive millions of doses from Moderna in the month of May as well as in the month of June. I, I do want to ask you one more question about AstraZeneca and you were asked about this today at the news conference about the price point and we've seen in emails from the Prime Minister's office that Canada is paying about $8 a dose and other countries are paying more like $3 a dose. Now I don't want to suggest that you're overpaying. I'd pay $80 for a dose of AstraZeneca right now because uh, of the importance of it. But why is there a gap? Is it because we can't make it here and they can make it in other countries so that drives the price down? Is it a volume price fluctuation? Just what is the reason for the price difference because your political opponents are making this a thing. So what's the, I wonder if you can give us the answer. Sure, let me answer that question directly as well. Uh, we do not have domestic biomanufacturing capabilities in Canada at the current time. AstraZeneca is offering its uh, vaccine at a not-for-profit level, but there needs to be taken into account the particular situation of each country. Given that we don't have domestic biomanufacturing, that is one of the factors that needed to be taken into account. Of course, in terms of the contract itself, I am obliged by confidentiality provisions mm -hmm. to maintain the confidence of the contract, but that should provide you with some explanation. Okay, Minister, thanks so much for that. And uh, the, the vaccine picture is much brighter, it seems, each time we talk. So hopefully the next time we talk, it will be brighter still. Thank you so much for your time. Millions of doses are coming in, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.